Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Eco Hitch Stealth Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2014 Toyota Prius V. And I do like the looks of it. It has a hidden design, meaning the cross tube is actually tucked up behind the bumper here and the only thing we actually can see is the receiver tube. It's also going to have a nice hammered powder coated finish which is going to help it blend in with the vehicle well. It also helps protect the hitch from rust over time being that it is on the underside of the vehicle. In regards to towing, our trailer hitch is going to provide us with a 3,500 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on our trailer. And it also has a 525 pound tongue weight rating, which is going to be the downward force on the receiver tube. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, you do need to verify the vehicle's towing capacity in your owner's manual if applicable and abide by the lower of the two rated components, whether it's the hitch or the vehicle, assuming the vehicle can tow. So we do have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, and that's gonna work great with the vast majority of bike rack and cargo carrier options on the market, because there's a much greater selection there for that larger opening. This is actually the only two inch hitch offered for this vehicle, therefore I definitely recommend this one over the others, just due to that accessory compatibility being that it's much wider than the smaller one and a quarter inch options. On the side of the receiver tube, we're going to have a 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole. It's going to work great with a 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Now keep in mind, the hitch pin and clip doesn't actually come with the trailer hitch. And the reason for that is a lot of your accessories are actually going to come with their own one. So you shouldn't have to worry about buying that separately. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube, we have our safety chain tabs. Those are going to work great with both the larger clevis style as well as the smaller S-type. A couple measurements for you guys here that's going to help you when you're selecting your hitch mount and accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. You're looking at about 13 and 3 quarter inches. And that'll be useful when you're selecting a ball mount. That way you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then finally, the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. You're looking at about 2 and a half inches, so that's going to work great. You're not going to have any issues with your accessories hitting the bumper. So in regards to installation, this one is pretty straightforward. It's definitely something I think you guys can do at home by yourselves. We just need common hand tools, and you don't need a lift or anything. You can do it on the ground. I would like to say that you will need a torque wrench, and you may not have one of those. We do have some cost effective options here at eTrailer, or you could just go to a local auto parts store and use their rent a tool program, which is usually free. But with that being said, we'll go ahead and walk you through this entire process step by step now. Give yourself around one to two hours, depending on your experience level. So the first step of our installation, we're gonna take some sort of spray lubricant, and we're gonna be spraying down this exhaust hanger here just directly behind our rear bumper. So we're actually going to be using a tool to pry this hanger from the rubber isolator to give us a little bit more room so we can put our hitch into position. So we're just going to go ahead and spray down that isolator now. And then we're going to take a pry bar here and we're going to pry the rubber hanger there or pry the metal hanger from the rubber isolator. Just like that. So now that we have the exhaust lowered, we need to remove two brackets, one on the driver's side frame rail and one on the passenger side frame rail. For this, you're going to need a 17 millimeter socket, more than likely an extension as well. So this bracket over here is the exhaust hanger bracket. That's going to be on the passenger side. So there's going to be two bolts holding that in. We'll go ahead and remove that now. And we'll show you the other bracket on the other side as well. So here's a bracket over here on the driver's side. It's going to be the same two bolts. So underneath the vehicle, we're going to have two fascia tabs, one here and one here. We need to remove that push pin fastener from the bottom of that. So once we get that push pin fastener in there, that should release this tab here and then we can just sort of fold it down so we can get our hitch into position. So before we get our hitch up into place here, we do need to assemble a couple of our bolts. We need two of these on each side. So we're going to take our M12 hex bolt an M12 split lock washer, and then an M12 flat washer to secure our hitch to the vehicle. So now we'll go ahead and set our trailer hitch into position. You're going to come up and over the exhaust on the passenger side first. You do need to bend your fascia support tabs out of the way. And then once we line up the holes with our hitch on the frame there, 
you will be sandwiching in your brackets that you removed previously before you install the new hardware. So once we get this side loosely secured, we're not going to tighten everything down just yet. We're just going to repeat these same few steps on the other side. Just keep in mind your bracket is going to be a little different. Now that we have all of our hardware in place, I'm going to come back with a 19 millimeter socket and I'm just going to snug everything up. We won't be tightening it all the way at this time. We're going to locate a hole on the side of our hitch here. And there's actually gonna be a hole in the bumper beam flange on the side as well that we're gonna use. So you're gonna take one of these brackets here that come in your kit, and what we're gonna be doing is, we're basically gonna be sliding that up in there. The bottom hole is gonna line up with that hole there, and the top hole is gonna line up the hole in our bumper beam. Now to secure it at the top though, we're gonna take one of our four inch long hex bolts and a flat washer, that one by two inch flat washer, and we're gonna stick that into the side of the bumper beam there and then once we line up the hole, we can use the other end of the thread to catch on to the end of our bracket. So before we go on to the end of our bracket there, you will need to get this little wedge here that comes in your kit and place that over the threads of your bolt. It should be pretty obvious which way that wedge faces because basically you just wanna make a nice and flat surface. So we'll take the other end of this bracket here and we'll place over the threads on our bolt and then we'll push everything together. Now on the outside to secure it we're going to take a flat washer we're going to put that over the threads of our bolt, a split lock washer, and then finally a hex nut. And we're just going to snug this up for now we're not going to tighten it down all the way just yet. And now to secure the bottom part of our bracket we're going to take the shorter half inch bolt that comes in your kit, a half inch flat washer. You may need to push up on the hitch to get everything to line up and just place it through. And then on the back side, which is gonna be hard to see, you're gonna place another half inch flat washer, half inch split lock, half inch hex nut. Now we just repeat those same few steps over on the other side of the vehicle using your other bracket. We can begin tightening and torquing all of our hardware down. We're going to start with the four M12 hex bolts that secure the hitch to the frame. We're going to be using a 19 millimeter socket. Once we have our M12 fasteners torqued, we need to torque down our half inch fasteners as well. So keep in mind, this is a lower torque value and we're gonna be using a three quarter inch socket and wrench. All we have left to do is, is to secure, re-secure rather, our fascia tab, so those brackets on the bottom. So we're gonna be using the provided quarter inch hardware that comes in your kit. We're gonna have a flat washer that we stick over the bolt. And then on the back side, we're going to have another flat washer and a nylock nut. So keep in mind, when we're tightening this down, we don't want to go too tight. Ours is actually stretching in a little bit because it's not quite lining up. So we're just going to snug it up until the lock nut engages the thread all the way because then I know it's not going to back out. But we need to do this on both sides. So in order to tighten that down, we will need an 11 millimeter socket and an 11 millimeter wrench. Don't forget to raise your exhaust back up into position. But once that is done, that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Eco Hitch Stealth Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2014 Toyota Prius V.